What's up guys, today we are watching season 6 episode 2 of Peaky Blinders. So last episode we saw that our beloved Polly passed away and I also didn't know that she passed away in real life. Like I was kind of confused as to why she would want to leave the show but I found out she passed out in real life which was really freaking sad. But also, what's it called? After Polly's death, you know, we got a time jump of like four years and it seemed like Tommy was about to get into like a business deal like with opium with Michael and ended up setting Michael up and getting him in jail, you know? And he went to North America after that. And at the end of the freaking episode, we saw Michael was still in jail and was gonna stay there while Gina and her uncle and like their family went to I'm pretty sure it was Birmingham, Birmingham, London, whichever freaking one. They're just going out the country, you know? And I was kind of surprised by that because I didn't think Gina was going to go too. But you know what? Everything's a surprise. But I'm ready to see what's going to happen this episode. So I guess let's just get into it. There will be a war in this family. And one of you will die. You've been too busy to punish the people who killed her. It seems like Ruby's doing better because wasn't she sick last episode? Where? That's the driver takes to see Dr. Robert. Let's have a look at Ruby. Hi. Whiteman is in one hour. Stay here, you can come. Yeah, he's really scared about what happened, so you can't really blame the man. <coughs> he just got out of that place. What made him sick? Not much, since we last spoke on the phone. Now you know Ruby is all clear, you can sleep. Yeah. Is he going to, though? Could be up a mountain in America. That wouldn't have been possible. The man I'm dealing with, he's coming to London. I need to be there. See, I was right about either Birmingham or London. Do you feel that? Do you feel anything? You know, you talk as if you're watching everything on the screen. He sometimes seems a bit emotionless and it's kind of scary, but... Seizing. Wait. Bro. Imagine walking in on that. That must be terrifying for her. And it's four years, one month, and six days. She's hard to drink. Going on strong. Tell me. You need to see a doctor. I've worked it down. Oh my god. Of course that's how that man's gonna be. Volunteers in person. Comrades. Your Labour representative for South Birmingham, Mr. Thomas Shelby, MP. I don't know why I thought it was about to be Mosley or something. It's been four years since we've seen that dude. Well, like, you know, four years in the show, but just like the other episode ago. Push. Because the king and all the king's horses and all the king's men <laughs> want you to be silent.
comrades. I will not be silent. Never. Not this Englishman. That's the lady who told him about Polly. Like on the phone at the beginning of the last episode. I don't think he's ever seen her before, so does he recognize her? Or maybe he just knows that she she's never usually there. I don't know. Lorna McKee. Battalion Commander for Mana Iore. You missed the first and second act. Thank you. Wait, so she told him at the beginning of the last episode. That means it's been four years. Lorna McKee and the Shelby family. Business comes before issues of vengeance. I'm a lover departed. You understand and approve. Crowded place. No need for crowds. We need you alive. I'll see you. Okay then, I didn't know they arranged a meeting with her. You know, Mr. Shelby, even though we've been doing business for a while, We've never met in person. That's what I was thinking. But I didn't think y'all talked since, like, literally you told them about Polly. This... This is a private letter from the President of the United States. Where the fuck did you get this? Huh. My racehorse, Model Turpitude. It's just one of many in my stables. In the middle. Just a man trying to make an honest living. In a very dark world. You were friends in Dublin, Lord McKee. I could also offer him Dublin. And you think this will allow us to ship our merchandise to Boston? Perhaps. There may be other benefits for your cause. Came to collect Arthur and put him to bed. Found him in Garrison Lane with a syringe in his hand. God damn, that quick? He just seemed like he was doing fine. But I guess like after Polly was mentioned. Is that a yes or no? My answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is always yes. <laughs> She's not surprised. Shit. It's all under control, Ida. Well, I am not under fucking control. I'm not you, Tommy, and I'm not Polly <laughs> either. Look at us now, eh? Yeah. Fucking look at us. Take a good look, Tom, because one of us isn't going to be here for long. Blame you. But this is my mission. And I will have no limitations. At least he's giving her a choice, too. I have children, Tommy. You have to carry this bucket on your own. Understandable. Expected. Who the hell is he visiting? Oh, and Mr. Solomon's no longer tolerates the smoking of tobacco in his presence. It's Alfie. I always thought that opera was just fat people fucking shouting. <laughs> oh, I love this man. I'm so happy he's here. Well, an opera of my own. 
Do not like that. No, no. Were you not told I have a condition? Well, I was told, Alfie. And he don't care. God damn it, Tommy. Make me full word. And I do not allow smoking because I do need to see fucking clearly. All right. Okay. Respectable. A member of your family has died. Charles Solomon's your uncle. He ran all the narcotics. The fact that he didn't even know that. In the cotton club, in the lavatory. By men that you know, and yet you did nothing, Alfred. Oh wait, so he did know. You need favors, Alfie. I need a fucking final act, right? Just a final fucking act for my opera. Him and his fucking opera, bro. I think I may have written your final act. Why don't you sit down and have a listen, eh? the one time this man listens. The Irish are being difficult. The Italians are not an option. Also, Alfie, you are my friend. Did you regret it? No. <laughs> How come you can remember so much about what happened 200 years ago, but you just can't remember what fucking happened last night? Johnny. Only me today. I thought she went to... Went to London. Tomorrow. Yeah, because I thought she was already in London. I've been thinking about you. Only you. Okay. Are you gonna do something in there? Jack says he has to die. Will you tell Jack to wait? If anyone's going to kill Tommy Shelby, it will be you. Of course, it's gotta be Michael, but. Five million dollars. The devil will be dead. The future belongs to us. I just want to know if that's actually going to happen. And our souls will come together and we'll fuck. I won't need an alarm clock. So that's what you're thinking about? Okay. Because we trust each other. Hmm. She's gonna miss a day. Oh, I lucky thought that that was freaking Mosley. I don't know why. I guess he's gonna be there. To launch the ship. I lucky he thought he'd never find someone because of how he is, but go for him? I don't know. As you should know, that Mosley's wife died six months ago. Give your condolences, will you? So he's already with someone new? Ah, Tommy! Johnny Dodge! 
Mosley invited me. He said, wear a black fucking shirt. Here you are. I said, I look like every other. I swear to God, he looks horrible, man. And he's causing a big ass scene as soon as he gets there. Them. Snow and junk from the company we're having. Look at your brother. Half he is gone. Half he is gone. The fuck? Maybe he needed the smack. I don't know. Do you believe in forgiveness? This is when I got back. Two days ago. Have a look. I didn't think he'd actually write Linda. Okay. He's underlined. Arthur, I'm not Christian. But I also believe in forgiveness. Is that gonna get him to shape up? I'll write Linda another letter. Because I know where she is. He better get clean and stay that way. Of course he's gonna join the fight. Soon as they hit Arthur, Tommy's like, I'm in now, bitch. The future prime minister of this great country, Sir Oswald Mosley. Was he just introduced by his mistress? I thought it would have been something else, someone else. I am confused. What was that about? This is Tommy Shelby, MP, OBE. Mr. Shelby, Lady Diana Mitford. Oswald's most recent and last ever mistress. Last ever. The fact that she had to mention that. We were in Paris on our honeymoon. God, I hate Paris. Hmm. Hey, you prefer Berlin. Oswald and I are going to marry there, aren't we, Oswald? Hmm. He didn't even seem to care. Okay. By the way, I really don't like Lizzie. I prefer liberated Elizabeth. She must be part of this. She's been all the way to Paris, so she is a woman of the world. Bravo. I literally don't like her. I don't like how she acts towards Lizzie. As if she's better. Actually, no. I don't really know much about this business at all. I respect that she's honest about that. But I have fucked your future husband. So I know lots of things about him. Okay then, Lizzie. I don't fucking blame you, bro. But Mr. Shelby, before this enterprise goes any further, you really must do something about your wife. What do you even mean? I swear to fucking God, they're aggravating. Mr. Shelby. Yes, Mr. Nelson. I came early. This is the uncle, Jack Nelson? Okay. Three. Made me what I became. What made you angry? Probably a lot of shit. Four years ago, his name was Thomas Shelby. He drank whiskey. I look, he didn't expect him to say himself. Okay. Indeed, in fact, of which I'm very proud. They say you're a, a poet too. No, I only read it. You just made a poem last episode to Michael. Or did you, was it just one you read? I think it was. 
A war hero I hear. Every war hero I ever met, they're just someone who wanted to get themselves killed. That's all everyone is gonna talk about this fucking season. Thomas Shelby is looking to get himself killed, like bro. What kind of drawings are those? Ruby, what are you doing, love? I can hear voices coming from up the chimney. That's scary. She also looks like she's sick. Like, she looks like she's sweating. And the bitterness of an overcrowded British slum. <laughs> what would you know about birds? <laughs> I didn't even see Mosley there. Westminster 245, House of Commons. The time is he isn't going to answer at all, so he's not going to know what's happening to Ruby. She's coughing up blood. Now he's gonna freak out again. It's the gray man. He says he's coming for me. And he's coming for daddy as well. What the fuck? Who the hell is that? What if he's imagining that and what if that's Lizzie? It's gonna be someone else! Or not. I thought I thought he was low-key fighting someone else. And like it would have been someone he knew or something. Listen, Tommy. He said we shouldn't come close to her in case. In case of what? In case it could something Yeah. In case it's something else. We told her. But we threw you to the number I gave you. As my Shelby Lee. I totally forgot about SMA. Oh my god. I swear, it's like thing after thing is happening this season. It feels so spooky in a way. Like it's a haunting season. People are dying. You know, Polly died. That's really the only one so far. Can't say anything. But it just seems like a lot of more people are gonna die. And everyone just keeps saying, like, Tommy is like trying to get himself killed and it's like no one's ever gonna find anything else to say about that man because I don't know maybe he does have a death wish you never fucking know but I was low-key thinking that once he got home Shel why was I about to say Shelby I mean Ruby I thought Ruby was low-key about to be dead and I would have felt like really bad but also don't kill a kid on this show even though they already did, kind of, like whenever the thingy exploded, you know? But that's besides the point. I thought he was gonna come home to Ruby dead, kind of. And I was scared about that because, you know, that's gonna throw him in a whole nother fucking spiral, especially since it's its kid, you know? Like, it's hard. And like, not even with just Ruby being sick, it's like, Arthur's going and like having a tough time too. He looked horrible last episode, he looked horrible this episode. But once Tommy brought up that he wrote to Linda and that Linda like believes in forgiveness, that's gonna help Arth 
well, it's supposed to help Arthur, you know, like, shape it up and get clean. You never fucking know. I didn't know it would take, like, I didn't know he would be hung up on her still. But, you know, he's Arthur. It's whatever. But hopefully that does help him, like, shape it up a bit, you know. Because I, I hate seeing him the way that he is. Like, he is better than that. And I wish he would stop doing the drugs. But not only that, we got to see my man Alfie this episode. And I I was so excited. Because technically, it's been like four years. I wonder if Tommy did see him within those four years. Loki, I kind of think not. But I don't know. But yeah, I was I was excited to see him this episode and him coming in on the plan, you know. It's like Tommy has something going with like every fucking person and I feel like somehow it's gonna get intertwined and he's gonna get caught in a rut and shit's not gonna go according to plan. Cause look what happened last time. His plan with Mosley didn't go according to plan and Abarama died, Polly died, Barney died. You never fucking know this time he's gonna fucking die i don't know if he dies i would kind of be surprised but also not you know because it's like i don't think they would kill the main character but it's like what if they just did that as like an ending to the show like what if that happens in the last episode i don't know am i predicting this shit loki i hope not i don't want that man to die but you never fucking know, man. There's just so much happening this season. And it's like, what's going to be next? I just want to know how it's going to be with Ruby. I hope she becomes okay sooner or later. It would be traumatic if she did die. But yeah, I want to see what's going to be happening with her. So I guess come back for episode three. 